All right, so following the previous video that we did on matrix operations, in this video I'm going to focus on matrix multiplication, but in particular I'm going to teach you how to solve matrix multiplication problems using this little program called Octave. So basically it is called GNU Octave, and it is an open source version of a program MATLAB, which is just a numerical computation software that you have probably heard of if you're doing engineering or science. So you can download it from uh, for free from the website. So it's just called G and U Octave, and I use it quite a lot for a lot of my computations. So it it's really nice, it's really good, and it's very easy to use. So just to give you a recap of what we did in the last video, we said that we can multiply two matrices A and B so long as the dimensions match. So for example, if matrix A is a two by three matrix and matrix B is a three by two matrix then what we can do is we can match the number of columns in A to the number of rows in B and if that is correct then we can multiply both matrices and the resultant matrix is going to have dimensions equal to the number of rows on A times the number of columns on B so the resultant matrix in this case would be a 2x2 two two matrix and we also talked about how for any matrix so let's say we have three components like this let's say we have a 3x3 three three matrix here and then we want to multiply it by a, say, 3 by 4 matrix. So first thing we need to do is, are those mat matrices multiplicable? So well, can we multiply them at all? Well, what we can do is we can match the dimensions to see if we can actually do this. And yes, we can because we have the same number here. So in the end, we're going to have a 3 by 4 matrix come out of this operation. So let's, let's have, basically the multiplication is performed the following way. We take the first row and then we're going to multiply each of the corresponding terms. So first term of the first row with first term of the second plus the second by the second and the third by the third. And then we're going to add those together and that's going to give us the first, the first element in our resultant matrix. Now to get the second element, what we're going to do is we're going to take the same row, but now we're going to multiply by this one, and we're going to perform the same procedure. Then for the third one, we're going to get this one and this one, and then for the second row, we get the second row of this matrix times each of those columns, and that's going to give us the four elements. And that's how we perform the matrix multiplication. Now, a little thing that I, might, I should have mentioned before, which I didn't, is that vectors are essentially just matrices. So let's say you have a vector 1, Let's say you have a vector 1, and let's say it is defined as a column vector, so it means that it's going to have just a whole bunch of rows, so let's say 1, 2, 3, and 4. So it's a, it's a vector with four components, so this is a, essentially a 4 by 1 matrix, because it has four rows and it has one column. And let's say you have a vector 2, that is a row vector, so let's say it has element 0, 1, minus 1, 2, and this is a 1 by 4 matrix because it has one row and four columns. So can we perform multiplication with these vectors? Well, let's have a look. Let's say we wanted to have vector 1 times vector 2. So what would that be? That would be this times that. S sorry. So because the number of columns in this one matches that, then it means that we can perform the multiplication. And what's the resultant matrix going to be from those two vectors? Well, it's going to be a 4 by 4 matrix. So we're going to have four elements here, four elements here. So we're going to have four rows and four columns. Now, what happens with the other way around? What happens when we multiply V2 by V1? In this case, we have to reverse the order. So now V2 has 1 by 4, and V1 is 4 by 1. So Yes, the dimensions that we need match so we can perform the multiplication, but now notice this. Now the resultant matrix is going to be a 1 by 1. And what is a 1 by 1 matrix? It's just a scalar value. It's just a single numerical value. So that's a really interesting thing. And this is essentially just a form of the dot product of two vectors. If you remember from basic vector algebra, that the dot product of two vectors is a scalar quantity. And that's essentially what this is in matrix form. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to get this whole row and then each of the elements are going to be multiplied by the corresponding elements along this column and then they're going to be added together. And that's going to give you a single value that is going to be a scalar value here. 
So that's a really interesting property. And I think that the best thing about linear algebra is that we need to treat everything as a matrix. So vectors are matrices, matrices can have all these sort of dimensions. And it's a really interesting thing. And we know how to perform addition and subtraction. They have to have the same dimensions and the same order. And multiplication, we need this particular condition to be met before multiplication can be performed. So now, just to show you how you can perform ap operations like that using Octave, I'm going to open it here, and I'm going to type um, as a simple matrix. So let's. this is the common prompt, so we can just put one-liner um, equations here or whatever. So the way you denote a matrix is essentially by using square brackets. So use square brackets there, and then you just put your values in there. So the values in a single row are going to be separated by a comma like this. And then the values of another row, so this is column one, column two, and column three. And the values on the second row are going to be separated by a semicolon like this. So let's say we have minus two, minus one, and zero. So what is this matrix here? Well, this matrix is essentially a, this matrix is a two by three matrix. It has two rows. So this is the first row. This is the second row. And then it has three columns. So it has one, two, three, one, two, three. So if we input that, that gives us the following matrix. So it gives you in matrix form that you can read. It's very nice. And now let's have another matrix. Let's make it a three by three matrix. So now we're going to have zero, one, just put in random numbers here, really. 1, 7, 5, and then for the third row, we're going to have 0, 3, minus 2. So that's going to give us the following matrix. So that's going to be this matrix. Now, let's see what we can do. Can we perform addition? Well, the program should be able to tell us. No, we cannot perform addition because non-conforming arguments, which means that the dimensions do not match. The dimensions are not equal which means that we cannot perform this type of operation. Now, how about A times B? So A times B would essentially be denoted by a little asterisk in the middle. Can we perform that operation? Yes, we can. As we have seen, A is a two by three matrix and B is a three by three. And since the dimensions match according to our condition here, then we can perform the operation very easily. Now, how about B times A? How about B times A? No, we cannot because now the dimensions do not match. B is a 3x3 three three matrix and A is a 2x3. So, you know, the number of columns in this one is not equal to the number of rows in this one, which means that we cannot perform that operation. And this is just one of the many things you can perform with this program. You can see that it's really fast. It's really easy to use. You can write your arguments in, in a very simple form. And we will actually be using this program in future videos to perform uh, very complicated operations with matrices. So I really recommend you download it and install it on your computer because it's going to come in quite handy. And yeah, in the next video, we're just going to continue performing some more operations on matrices.